Hey guys, it's Sean at Stranger Films, and today I'm here with Patrick at aerialmediapros.com, and he's going to talk a little bit about this octocopter rig that they've got going. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the weight limit, the cost, ease of use, all that kind of stuff? Great. So we'll start with the the weight. The max payload right now is around a 5D Mark III, which we build the Zimus gimbal for. So its payload capacity is around seven pounds, eight pounds, with the camera and gimbal system. This is the latest model. It's called the S1000. One of the biggest features that I really like is the transportability that you have. Everything fits down right into this Pelican case. It's a two operator setup, so you use one control to control the camera gimbal and you use another controller to control the copter itself. The landing gear, it retracts and gets up out of the way, so now the camera operator has a 360 freedom to pan and track the subject without getting parts of the copter into the shot. The transportability I mentioned, you get on set, you pull it out of the case, you pop the arms on, and you're ready to go. Fantastic. Um, for somebody who has never used a remote controlled operating uh, gimbal or uh, you know aerial device before, how easy do you think it would be for somebody to get up and running and familiar with the system enough to get like basic shots? It's a good question. A lot of people ask that, should they start with this one? I recommend if you're looking at doing this and you want to really get to the highest level, start with one of our smaller copters like the Phantom 2. You can pick that up for around 900 bucks and it comes with that new three axis stabilized gimbal. You could literally learn that within a day. I know I took my friend out last week and within an hour he was doing little box patterns and he could turn the copter around and stuff like that. The GPS is kind of like a fail safe and it makes learning a lot easier because if you're flying and you get stressed out or maybe you lose orientation in the copter, you can simply let go of the controller and the copter is going to position and stabilize itself. So that gives you the opportunity to kind of take a breath, relax, regain control of the copter, land. Once you're confidently able to fly that, you can do figure eights and you can hover it pointing towards you, that would probably be the time to start considering flying one of these. I will mention that if you can fly the small one, you can definitely fly the big one. The flight control is going to be much more precise in the larger copter, and it's going to handle winds a lot better, so it'll actually be more stable. It's a little more intimidating because of the size, but if you can fly the small one, you can fly one of these. So in terms of the environment, uh, what would say like the, the maximum altitude, speed, maximum uh, wind that you could fly it in and the range of the, of the controller, what would that be? So we're in Orange County, California, right on the coast. We do a lot of water stuff. We're typically flying about 15 to 25 mile per hour winds. Within that range, we haven't had any issues. The copter is moving around quite a bit, but the camera gimbal still locked in. The smaller copters, you want to probably go maximum 15 to 20 miles per hour. Recently, we're doing a shoot at about 7,000 feet up in Big Bear, and we had the copter flew perfectly, and we're going about 40, 45 miles per hour chasing some cars. So they perform really good at altitude. When you do get up to altitude in the cold weather, I will mention you want to keep an eye on your battery voltage because cold weather kind of decreases your flight time. So make sure you keep an eye on that. You mentioned range. We could take the smaller copters about half mile to three quarter mile, and then this one can probably go about the same three quarter to a mile. Now this one has some technology called the Data Link Ground Station. So now we can use Google Earth Image with the app and we can program our flight. We can simply tap where we want it to go, the altitude we want to fly and how fast we want it to fly. You hit go, the copter's gonna do its mission and come back home and land. It's really cool because the copter's doing its thing while you're sitting there operating the camera and framing up your shot. So it's fun to play with too. That's fantastic. And then, just because I know a lot of people are going to be worried, we've all seen the pictures on Facebook of, you know, crashed rigs and things yeah. like that. Uh, what happens if, you know, one of the engines fails here? That's a good question. With an octocopter, we have some redundancy. So you can lose up to two motors with this and still fly safely. So with the octocopter, much more forgiving, much more redundant. It's a lot more safer copter to fly. Well, thank you very much for talking with us welcome, uh, about this rig. And thank you for watching. Thank you, guys. Thank you.